Um, you know, then thousands of people to one phone, and now a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, that's what hyperconnectivity is. Uh, there's no queuing, there's no waiting. You're connected all the time, constantly. Um, and it's this. I trust my network more than I trust your brand. When I come in, in the old world, I come into retail, and my retail experience, I'd bring in whatever information I had, and then I'd look at the back of the packages, and whatever they told me, and I'd see prices high, medium, and low, and I'd tend to pick the medium. In the new world, I come in with everybody I know, everybody they know, full global pricing. It's 100% transparent. It's 100, you know, I, I, I understand completely what I'm dealing with. And the retailer no longer has walls. Those walls are gone to keep me inside. Um, this is not a hypothesis. This is a real picture of a store in Brazil. These are Facebook likes for every article of clothing. All the clothes are posted up on the site, and people are liking and disliking. Now, some people freak out and go, oh my god, that's crazy. They're only going to buy the one that's most liked. Some people want the one that's most liked. Some people want the one that's least liked. Some people want, eh, I just want to be in the middle somewhere. So all it is, it's just information transparency. This is live today. If you're standing in front of it, the numbers are ticking. <laughs> they're, they're changing dynamically. So they're all wired in. <laughs> um, Dave Carroll, anyone heard of Dave Carroll? So Dave Carroll's a Canadian musician who checked his $3,500 guitar with United, and they destroyed it. So he applied under their program, and they denied it. So he appealed, and they denied it. So Dave made three videos in 2009 called United Breaks Guitars, watched 11 million times. The estimate is that it cost United $180 million in market cap. Now what is this? This is hyperconnectivity. United lived in the old world. United's like, Canadian musician? Oh, sorry, I broke your guitar. What are you going to do? Dave's in the new world. He told everybody. And it cost United $180 million. And this is what I tell people. You can't abuse any customer. Any customer. You have no idea what audience that customer might have or accrue. Dave Carroll did not have 11 million fans. Let's be clear. A few thousand if he was lucky. But he wrote some damn funny videos that ran around the internet and told everyone that United abuses their customers. And he started two companies, <laughs> Gripevine, which is for consumers to complain about merchants and, and, and clients. And then this is for the merchants themselves. Resolution one, lead the conversation. So the other problem that United had is that they didn't respond at all. This whole phenomenon was happening and they didn't respond at all. And this is the, a small sample of the people going after this space. You know, whether it's social scoring or social intelligence or games or networks, browsing, I mean, and I can tell you 100% certainty this is already out of date, and there's, I could fill a whole other page like this. The people going after, after hyperconnectivity, disrupting existing information asymmetries. Ah, the apps, our beloved apps. Um, uh, it's true, though. Uh, we're crazy for our apps. Um, there's over a million, uh, 1.2 million apps on Android and iOS combined. And even more shockingly, so 1.2 million apps, there's about a billion, just over a billion smartphones downloaded 50 billion times. I mean, just ridiculous, ridiculous. We're completely addicted to our apps. Um, uh, and BlackBerry's still in there with, another, with, a, with a 3 billion, which is kind of cute. Um, <laughs> it's all about meticulous simplicity. Uh, so Johnny Ives, if you don't know Johnny, he's the main designer of all things uh, Mac and Apple uh, from a hardware perspective. And actually now he's taking over software as well. And what he said, you know, it's not an appearance game we're playing. It's very utilitarian. It's the use of material in a very minimalist way. And um, I'm here to tell you simplicity is winning hands down. So moving from sort of the old world of GUIs and Macs and Mices and, and Windows to touch voice gesture, as uh, Chris was saying, like that, that is the future of interfaces, where it's a completely intuitive interface. And it's winning. So look, at this is the average sale price between six dollars $700 from Apple and iPhone compared to the other handset manufacturers. Not nearly as many units, but the cost per unit is incredibly high comparatively. And so what does this actually mean? Look at this. 10%, this is industry. 10% of units driving 45% of volume 
taking 75% of industry profit. 10% of units, 75% of industry profit going to Apple. Now this has changed a little bit since that. This was the kind of end of 2011, early 2012. Samsung in the last six to nine months has taken a lot and uh, the share of profits has gone from 75% to around 62, 63%. So Samsung is starting to take back some of the industry profits. But this is all about simplicity. Um, you remember this? Twisting, turning, colors, buttons, shapes, etc. This is the world pre-iPhone, this is the world post-iPhone. The flat black slab has won. We, we'll never go back to this, that's gone. That will never happen again. And it's about mobility moving to usability. So what did Apple add to the equation? It was a usable interface, a very, very intuitive, usable interface. It wasn't just moving with me, but it was something I, I loved using. And as we said, for children, I mean, you can watch a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, no problem. In fact, there's a great YouTube video with a girl with a real magazine poking the picture. She's like three and a half. She's poking the picture, she's trying to get, she can't get the thing to interact with her. And then you see an arm come in with an iPad and she like throws the magazine away and she says, ah, oh, and she's flipping and poking and I mean, you know, it's just completely intuitive. Um, there's another great example, remember this? This is the old world, Sony remote. God forbid you lose your manual. God forbid you have your manual and you have to figure out what the red, green, yellow, and blue buttons do. And this is the Apple remote, right? Doesn't come with a manual does not require a manual. And you know, how do I prove simplicity is, is winning? Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Add the market cap of them together and you get Apple. Now that's changed a little bit in the just recent past. But for the most part, it's incredible. Brands you might know, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, add together, you get Apple. So simplicity is winning hands down. Um, the speed of it is ridiculous. Every product has gone faster. The iPad adoption has been three times the rate of the iPhone adoption. Um, actually, the rule of thumb amongst analysts is that every new iPhone will sell the cumulative amount of all the prior iPhones. So people just upgrade. In fact, when they announced the five, they sold two million in an hour. And you look at the rate increasing from 60,000, 600,000 to a million it's just incredible, it's just shocking. Um, look at this, this is physical retail now. Productivity in sales per square foot. So let's be clear what we're looking at here. Consumer electronics, diamonds. So consumer electronics, plastic, silicon, whatever, and then diamonds, gold, platinum, at half the profitability. <laughs> it's like, and this is not because of the inherent, you know, it, this is about usability, it's about simplicity. So people just loving it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this, this is a photo posted by a professor at a university, and the quote underneath is he said, I feel like I work in an orchard. Uh, I'm not complete Apple fanboy, so Android is obviously coming up tremendously. Three out of four smartphones in the last three months were Android. Uh, 1.3 million activated per day. <laughs> Since I talked about burgers before, you know, <laughs> you look at the, uh, uh, activations per second and sold per second, it's actually pretty comparable between Android devices and burgers. <laughs> this, I love this chart. Again, Mary Meeker, she's a rock star. So this is an incredible way to look at the world, which, you know, the mobile shouldn't have been a surprise. So this is a logarithmic scale on the side. We had about a million mainframes in the 60s and then 10 million mini computers, up to 100 million PCs by the mid 90s. Desktop internet, we hit about a billion. If we had stopped there, you'd say, well, something's coming next, and that's what happened. We have about 10 billion mobile internet, and this internet of things is where we're going. There's no doubt about it that we're gonna have 10 billion and go up to 100 billion units of internet of things connectivity. So this is, a, this is not, it shouldn't be a surprise, right? I mean, it, literally, it's been happening for 50, 60 years. This trend line has continued almost as a straight line up the logarithmic scale, which is, which is interesting. Um, this Internet of Things, you know, it's connected via Bluetooth, via Wi-Fi, via GSM, and it's connecting everything, whether it's your shoes with Nike or your thermostat with Nest or uh, your Wi-Fi scale with Withings. I mean, there's a ton of devices and sensors that are being connected. Um, this is a world where I'll walk past Tesco and my phone will notify my fridge and my fridge will say we're running low on milk 
my phone and Tesco will say, if you come in now for milk, I'll give you 10% off. And this isn't, I'm not talking Minority Report like sometime in 50 years. Already, you can buy a Wi-Fi connected scale for your fridge. It sits in your fridge, it's connected to your Wi-Fi, and whatever you put on it, it notifies you as the weight decreases over time. The Tesco part, they're working on, believe me. Right around the corner. Um, this should be familiar to some of you. <laughs> um, so this is a weird phenomenon. Um, it used to be, and I'm sure most of you remember, you went to the office and you got better kit than you had at home. You were excited to get the laptop from work or the phone from work, et cetera. Now, you have a tablet, a, a smartphone, a Mac Air, whatever, and you go to work and they hand you an HP with Windows 95 on it. You're like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. You have IT departments who are like, it's 2 p.m. and no one's on the network. Where the hell is everybody? Well, they're working on their own machines. They're not going to wait 15 minutes for a machine to boot. It's not going to happen anymore. The world has inverted in that regard. And they're paying attention. So 80% of the Fortune 500 are deploying iPhones and 65% iPads. And actually, I think that's data. I think those numbers, it's probably around 95% now for iPhone. And you've also heard the bring your own device phenomenon, where they're like, yeah, just, you know, we can't stop you. And this is, again, old world versus new world. In the old world, lock everything and only open what needs to be open. In the new world, it's open everything and only lock what needs to be locked. And that's a very different approach for IT departments. They're looking at it going, oh, God, OK, fine, we'll, okay, we'll adjust. And they have to, because they have no choice. <clears throat> Look at this. <clears throat> Wintel, Windows and Intel, I mean, they owned the world from 93 to 2007. The launch of the iPhone was right here around 2006, 7. And then Apple and Android came in as a platform for an operating system. And it's radically changed the world. Windows is looking at it and going, oh, my God, like this is, this is why they have to do a Windows phone. They have no choice. When, uh, worlds colliding, balance is good. So uh, we did a deal with uh, RBS. It was RBS and O2. It was a 50-50 partnership um, to launch O2 money. Um, and I'm not going to walk through all the details of this, but uh, suffice it to say that they're two very different industries and very different companies where the dynamics are radically different, where the bank guys, my guys, wanted to know how many nines it was going to have, four or five nines. And the O2 guys were comfortable with the 80-20 rule. Ah, we'll push it out. We'll fix it as we go. Um, and also, the economics are, are very different. So the bank guys, I mean, we invented a word to not feel bad about the percentage points, like we, basis points, right? A basis point, everyone knows, like 1% of 1%, right? You say basis points to someone in telco, they don't know what you're talking about. They, the, the, it has to be five percentage points, 500 basis points for them to think it's interesting. The largest deal I did at PayPal, which was the largest deal I had done at the time, was over 14 basis points. A telco would just laugh at that. They're like, that, that, that makes no sense to us economically. But the churn is different, right? The churn is very different as well. So telcos are losing 20 to 30 percent of their customers a year. If you say that to a banker, they'll pass out flat. They're like, oh my god. like. A quarter of our customers a year, you know, so very different dynamics in those industries. 